What's up YouTube? It's me. It's Arthur, aka the Indie Comic Book Guy. Today we're going to talk about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode, Deuce, the Star Spangled Man. Whoa! This was a good episode. I gotta say it again. Whoa! This was a good episode. This is a comic book. Come to life. This had all the trappings of a great action thriller. It had all the trappings of Captain America, uh, the Winter Soldier, mixed in with a little Captain America Civil War. So it was very true to the Captain America legacy in more ways than one. Now, the episode was like 45 minutes. It seemed like it was 20 minutes because from the beginning to the end, it was just constant movement. Now, there were some slow bits, and we did learn a lot from those slow bits. Now, the episode starts off where episode one ended. We are greeted with the new Captain America, John Walker, get a little flashback scene with him, and learn a little bit more about him. You know, he was a soldier, he idolized Steve Rogers, blah, 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 blah. We meet his partner. Surprise, surprise, it's Battlestar. Captain America and Battlestar are back, baby, just like in the comic books. This Battlestar is a little different. You know, they were both soldiers, and now apparently they're operatives. Uh, I remember in the comic book, there were some problems with... The Battlestar, he couldn't read, and, you know, it was kind of like a special case. So, this one seems more on his level. They were both friends, they were both served together. So, you don't have that weird Battlestar, you know, I need to learn how to read and write type story that it played a lot of black characters in comic books back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. And... So you got Battlestar and Captain America, they're back, they're ready to prove themselves. They're a new team, they want to prove themselves. Uh, John Walker, he he's on a press run. You know, they got the cheerleaders, they're doing halftime shows, they're doing Good Morning America. They're really trying to sell this new Captain America to the people. But he hasn't proved himself yet. In fact, Bucky is so pissed. Remember in episode one, he was not answering Sam's uh, text messages. He actually rose up on Sam like, yo, did you see this mess? And Sam's like, yeah, I saw it. And Bucky's like, yo, we need to steal the shield back. And Sam's like, no. Remember what happened last time? We were on the run for two years. And long story short, Sam's like, I don't have time for this. I got important things to do. And Bucky's like, what do you got to do? Sam's like, yo. It's this group. They call themselves the Flag Smashers. They're up to something. I need to figure out what. So, Bucks is like, yeah, I'll come with. So, they go and they find this group of sma uh, Flag Smashers. And they fight. Guess who shows up? New Captain America and Battlestar. Basically, the Flag Smashers kick Falcon's butt. The Winter Soldier's butt. New Captain America's butt. Battlestar butt. Falcon even jokes to Winter Soldier's like, yo, Bucky, you got your butt kicked by a girl. Like, what's up with that? So that happened. We get one interesting scene where Bucky's like, yo, I need you to meet somebody. Sam, come with me. Come. Just just come on. I, I want you to meet with meet somebody. Come with me. So they go to Baltimore. And a little kid, little black kid, he recognizes uh, Sam. He's like, hey, you're Black Falcon. And Sam's like, no, I'm just, it's just a Falcon. But my black, my dad calls you Black Falcon. And Falcon's like, yo, people can see that I'm a black man by the color of my skin. I don't need to call myself Black this or Black that. Remember in the comic books, you would always have like Black Goliath, Black Lightning. Black Samson, you know, all these black this, black that, you know, aside from Black Panther, which the Black Panther, that whole thing is part of their culture, part of their legacy, a part of their tribe. Makes sense for Black Panther, but these other characters being called Black this or Black that. Doesn't make sense. And Falcon's like, you know, do you want me to call you Black Boy? He's like... This doesn't make sense that people put these 
black this and black that ahead of who they are. I'm a writer by trade. I don't consider myself a black writer. I'm a writer. People can see I'm black. I don't have to put, I am a black writer in my byline. And neither should you, no matter what you're doing. If you're white, you don't like, I'm a white writer. I'm a white actor. And so forth. It's crazy, but people do it. If we want to stop the separation, we have to stop doing that to ourselves. So I'm glad that they pointed that out in this series. So, they go into this house. They meet an elderly black man who had some history with Bucky when he was with the Winter Soldier back in the Korean War. They had a fight. And the guy's like, yeah, I kicked your butt. They sent me in. And you find out this is Isaiah Bradley, a.k.a. the first Captain America. Steve Rogers didn't even know about this. And if you read the comic book Captain America, Red, White, and Black, it's called Captain America The Truth, Red, White, and Black, you'll know his history. And we also meet his grandson, Eli, who becomes the Patriot in the Young Avengers comic book. So, in between one division setting up Wiccan and Hulkling, and the Hawkeye series having Kate Bishop, Marvel is slowly planting the seeds for the Young Avengers movie. So, I'm looking forward to that. So, then we move forward in the story, and, you know, guess who shows up again? New brand Captain America. He wants to be friends with Bucky, and he wants to be friends with Sam. They're not having it. They do not want anything to do with this new Captain America. And, you know, John's like, yo, Okay, if you don't want to join me and work with me, just stay out of my way. Kind of like a threat. Stay out of my way. Of course, that's going to rub Bucky and Sam the wrong way. It ends up ending with them realizing these Flag Smashers are super soldiers. They're not the big three. They're not aliens. They're not gods. They're not wizards. They are super soldiers or something close to it. Who knows about super soldiers? Baron Zemo. So it ends with Sam and Bucky. They're like, yo, let's go pull up on uh, Baron Zemo. See what he knows about this. That's how it ends. Now, I left some tidbits out because I want you to watch this episode if you haven't seen it. I don't want to spoil everything. Because then we'll start talking about power brokers and about how John Walker doesn't have a super soldier serum in him right now. But in a comic book, he did obtain them. He did obtain them. I'll let you theorize that connection. Theorize. And I want you to theorize how he goes from being Captain America to being the U.S. agent, which he's been known most of his comic book career. Overall, great episode. As I said, it's very fast. It moves very fast. The slow parts do reveal a lot about the characters within the Captain America corner of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as well as the comic. Sharon Carter, she's mentioned... She's coming up in probably the next episode. We do know we're going to see Baron Zemo. So, overall, great episode. I'm looking forward. It's a six-episode miniseries. I'll see you next week with my thoughts on it. Um, last video, somebody was like, is there anything you didn't like about this particular episode? Uh, if I have to be picky, uh, the pacing. Like I said. It was very uh, fast-paced. I wish they would have slowed the action down a little bit. But that's just me. I'll see you in the next video. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm that indie comic book guy. This is Black Panther. We'll see you in the next video.